The following lesson is from SQL Server 2008 Implementation and Maintenance 7432 Learn Smart Video Training. To find out how you can get unlimited access to our entire Learn Smart Video Training library, call 1-800-418-6789. Now let's install SQL Server. My DVD is in the machine. Put yours in and let's get started. So here's the DVD drive. Let me think, what are we going to do? Can you figure it out? This is a test. Setup. You're not going to see those screens. That has to do with security on my particular setup. So this is SQL Server Installation Center. And as you can see, it's divided into sections. And we're in planning. This will take us to various hardware and software resources that will help us plan our installation of SQL Server. But you've already done all the planning. I'm going to skip by installation and just let you see some of these screens. If you're going to upgrade a version of SQL Server, for instance, from developer to enterprise or standard to enterprise, repair SQL Server or remove a node from a failover cluster, but you can go through these on your own. Let's get to the installation. We have several options. We're not going to do a clustered installation or add a node to a cluster. We're not upgrading, although you can upgrade from SQL 2000 or SQL 2005. We're just going to do a new standalone installation. This is also where you'd go if you didn't install all of the parts of SQL Server that you intended to, and now you want to come back. Maybe you don't install Analysis Services now, but later you want to install it. You go to this very same place. Now what it's done is check to see if uh, we can actually install SQL Server on this box, and you can see the details of the reports, but, but we passed, so let's move on. So it gathered some information about our box, and now we can see that this is no longer grayed out. So let's click on install. What it's done now is check some rules. These rules are intended to let us know whether or not the SQL Server install will likely work. And you see we're green everywhere past with a warning. The warning is on this particular warning, Windows Firewall, is just going to tell us that there's a, a firewall turned on on this server then we need to ensure that the proper ports are open if we want people to get at SQL Server through the firewall. So we'll just click Next. So here we have some choices. We see the installed instances already. Here's the shared components. And here's the instance name that I showed you earlier. So we can add other features to the existing instance, but we don't want to do that. That instance is fine. We'll use it later. We want to do a brand new instance. And so we need to come up with an instance name. Our one instance is called SQL Server 2. Maybe we'll call this instance SQL Server. The product key has already been added. Here you're required to read the terms of the license. Well, you're not actually required to read the terms, although I would. You're just required to accept the terms. So here's the list of things that we can install. Notice that these shared features are grayed out. They're grayed out because we already have an instance of SQL Server 2008 installed on these box. So these things were already installed. If this is the first time you've done an install of SQL Server on this box, you would be allowed to check which of these things you wish to install. Now we want to get the database engine, and we're going to look at replication, so let's go ahead and install that now. And We need to configure full text search. I'll show you that soon. We're not going to do anything with analysis services, but let's go ahead and install reporting services as well. So what are we going to call our named instance? The default instance name is MS SQL Server. Let's call this uh, SQL 2008. We're going to let the root directory be the default directory. And notice 
we've already seen these files, the folder that SQL Server will be MS SQL 10 dot, and then the instance name, and we chose SQL 2008. Notice that we're trying to install the Enterprise Edition, and it has the features and then the version number. So we're good to go. So do we have enough disk space? It looks like we do. Service accounts. We spent a lot of time talking about service accounts. Here's where you set those accounts up. The SQL Server agent, I'm going to browse and find a login. This login was created for this account, so let's use that one. And will SQL Server Agent start up automatically or manually? Let's have this one be automatic. For the database engine, let's do the same account and reporting services. You would be more secure if you created a separate account for each one of these services, granting only the permissions necessary for that service. I believe that we're good. So it looks like we're in good shape to go. What's next? So the account provisioning, the authentication mode, allowing Logins only or trusted security only or mixed mode. I'm going to do this one for mixed mode and set a password. This needs to be a strong password. And this is the password for the SA account. It's actually not a best practice to use mixed mode. You would use that if you have applications which cannot use trusted security. So, in this bottom tab, who are going to be system administrators of SQL Server? In earlier editions, the built-in administrators group on this piece of hardware, on this box, were automatically system administrators. Now, no one is automatically a system administrator. So, I'm going to add myself or this, this login account as a system administrator of SQL Server. And then you can click on Add and add other groups or accounts to be administrators of the box as you wish. For reporting services, you can do native mode or integration with SharePoint. We're going to choose native mode with a default configuration. Here you can choose whether you want to report features and usage and error reports back to Microsoft. Uh, in case we mess up later, I don't want to be delayed sending that information. So for us, for right now, we're not going to click it. But selecting these allows Microsoft to do a better job in future versions of SQL Server by seeing what errors have occurred. So it looks like everything is passing so we can go forward. Now all we need to do is click install and wait. I bet you're feeling pretty good right now, aren't you? Well, you should. You've done a whole day's work and it only took you a couple of minutes. You see, SQL Server is not that hard. So you started down the path, and you know you're going to be successful. So don't worry about it. Let's just keep going. Now that we've installed SQL Server, we actually have two instances. So let's take a look at how we're going to configure an instance of SQL Server.